All right, so problem from the previous video is what do we do with about this z? What should z be? Let's test against it and that sort of thing. Naively, we could say, well, vector 3D victim, I believe we made the default parameter arguments to all be zero, so we should just put a zero right here as well, Jamie, and all should be fine. And so let's take that approach, and again, I'm going to throw a term out here that I've thrown out earlier and not go into too much detail quite yet, but I want to say homogeneous coordinates. Anyways, keep that in the back of your head. Let's put this zero here and um, and go implement our, our matrix test. So let's go here and let's see. I'm going to bring up that program I used in the previous video when I was showing off uh, how we can use Z to do the translation. Hopefully this looks familiar and I'll try to fit it in best I can into the recording area. And remember, here's our house. You can see the outline of our house and I have the red base, the original red basis vectors there in the middle. Uh, and then to translate, all we did was change these values up here. So to make our unit test pass, we essentially have to create a matrix. 3D, uh, all identity values down here, but then we need to change this uh, upper right to row 0, column 2, and row 1, column 2 values, like so, because this is the X component of our Z basis vector. This is the Y component of our Z basis vector, which you could see in 3D here. If I bring this over and up, the Z basis vector is this blue one sticking out right there. So if we change the X or the Y, our house will move like so. So naively, let's uh, let's go implement it that way. Let's uh, matrix 3D. Uh, let's do. How can I make this? Format like so. One zero x. And go over here. Zero one y. And then zero zero one like so. Okay. Control F five. If everything is good, our unit test should pass. I believe we still have the unit test project selected as our startup. So control F five. This. Let's see what happens. Ow! I still failed. Now you know that I knew that was going to happen, but but if you're naive, which I was, and I have been for many years, and finally I've sunk this concept straight in my head, but it's taken a while. Uh, my unit test still failed. What failed? What failed? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just look at this. In fact, let's bring the unit tests up here, and uh, I'll tab back over here to the results. So, victim prime is a negative 3. Victim prime x is a negative 3, but it should have been a 1. And victim prime y, uh, it was an 8, but it should have been a 16. What is going on here? And then notice the z, the z passed. All right? We didn't get an error here for victim prime dot z. The z passed. So scratch your head a little bit. Pause the video. Might take a little bit of working out, but think about it. In fact, as a hint, let me bring this back up. Let's go back to our 2D view. If you look at this window, and think about all the math that's going on, and I'd probably, for now, forget all about all these vertices. Think about this top vertex right here. Think about what's going on when we multiply this matrix times this vertex. What's going on there? Pause the video, get out some paper, pencil, work it out. See if you can figure out what the problem is. Why are we getting failures on X and Y, yet the Z is good. In fact, notice the X and Y if I bring up uh, our, our tests here. The X and Y, well, negative 3, that's our original X. And 8, that's our, that's our original Y. So we didn't get the translated values, we got the original values back. Okay, so consider this vertex with this matrix, work it out by hand, what is the problem. Pause the video and then I'll come back and talk about it. Okay, first of all, when I'm debugging or trying to figure things out, numbers like this, like negative one, negative one's not too bad, but negative 1.55 and 1.45, oh, you know, three, uh, well, I guess 1.45 is the result because we, some, you know, a combination of something or other. This came out as 1.45. I, I don't like, when I'm debugging or trying to figure things out, I like to keep the numbers simple. So let's, uh, in fact, if we can, let's just debug one value. So I'm going to take this x to a positive 1. And this y, 
this y, let's just take it down to zero and worry only about the one. Or I mean, this this x is a one. We'll we'll forget the y. I don't want to deal with two numbers at once. I know that something's messed up, and I could probably detect it with just one number. So I'm going to eliminate as much as I can here, as far as headache. Let's clear this off the screen as well, and let's go through and try to figure out why why were we getting errors? All right. Uh, according to our original problem uh, from the the unit test, let me bring the unit test back up here. Uh, sandbox game. So we had uh, numbers like 4 and 8 and negative 3 and 8. I'm going to actually, uh, control C, I'm going to keep these original values like so, but I'm going to comment this out and try to come up with a test case similar to what I'm trying to show you here on this GUI. So looks like our input vector is going to be 0, 3. So the victim will be 0, 3. And then we're going to translate, looks like 1 in the x, 0 in the y. So let's translate by 1 in the x, 0 in the y. Bring this up so you can see it. And then what should our result be? Well, if I translate victim 0, 3 by 1, 0, then I should get, uh, let's see, sorry, 0 plus 1 is 1, good. And then 0 plus 3 should be 3. That's what... We should, we should pretty much get a combination of these two. We should get, we moved over in the 1 on the x, so this went to a 1, but the y's did not change, so here's our resulting y. And then z, again, we're going to leave it 0 because that's our default z value. Let's control F5 this. We should expect it to fail because uh, those other numbers failed before. And yes, sure enough, x is a 0, but it, we were expecting a 1. The y is gone because... Again, I've, I'm just choosing values to eliminate the y. I only want to think about one thing at a time. If I can fix the x, chances are it will also fix the y. And if it doesn't fix the y, well, I know how I fix the x, so then I can go and apply that to fixing the y. There's my debugger hat turning on. When you go apply for jobs, they'll often say, we want people with good debugging skills. And, and that's just one of those skills that I've gained over time. And I just move this thing up. Let's move it back down. All right. Let's, uh, let's try to work this out a little bit. There's one thing I've kind of been ignoring, though, I need to point out here, and this probably is going to give away <laughs> give away <laughs> what the problem is, but our z is a 0 here, correct? So let me uh, grab our input z here. Our input z, z is a 1, and I said to ignore this when I first brought it up, but now it's important. I'm going to bring it down to a 0, and, and then uh, you can watch what happens as you do. This is kind of going to give it away, but let's, let's take it down to a 0. And notice, oh... Look at that. This vector, this resulting vector, went back to its original position. In fact, watch. As I grab this and move it around, he, he, he's breaking out of the mold. He's like, no, nah, forget you. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to be lazy. Right? The other guys are moving just fine because their Zs are, are still one. But, but whoa, what's going on here? All right, let's see if we can figure it out. I'm going to put this back at a one. I'm going to move the whole house over one. And then why is he stuck where he is? Well, remember our matrix multiplication at zero for this ver uh, vertex there, or vector if you would, it's zero times this, so this adds nothing. It's plus three times this, so we have three in the y, which we do, it's one, two, three. And then it's zero times this. And then why did we add this basis vector? What was the point of adding this basis vector? Think back to the few videos ago why I even brought this up and I, I showed this. Let me tell you the video number again. Let me look it up. Okay, well, it looks like it's video 57 here. I was, I was doing that originally. So go reference that if you need to. But again, the idea is I use this third basis vector to do the translation. All right? In 3D, in fact, let me... Click on view in 3D. We can see here. Let me erase this stuff. In 3D, as we... Oh, look at that. That's kind of an interesting view. That should probably give you a few clues as well. Here's our Z basis vector. And as I change that Z basis vector X, all the vertices move, except now we have the renegade up at the top there. This this uh, vector here, this vertex, this point however you want to think of it, is not moving because 
he is taking nothing out of this z basis vector. At zero, right here, times the basis vector that is allowing us to do the translation, either in the x direction or in the y direction. Okay, he's just being lazy, he's stuck there. All right, now if I grab this basis vector, well, he's taking three of this basis vector, and yeah, he'll move now, okay, but let me put that back down to zero, but he's taking nothing from our vector that adds translation in, so that's why he's staying where he's at. Okay, I hope that, I hope that makes some sense here. Let's, uh,